before we even start guessing cards, uh, did you want to introduce yourself just so we have a little bit of a background or people who don't know who you are have a little bit of background on, on how you know magic and uh, how good you are at magic? Uh, yeah, so the little known fact, I'm actually the world championship of Magic the Gathering. Y oh. If you try and look it up, it's there's like a weird thing with the way that my name works and like Google searches where it won't come up, but uh, I am. So hate when that happens. Uh, probably the best player. I started playing Magic uh, around the time that I stopped playing Hearthstone. I, I was sitting at a bus stop one day and I was like, you know what? What if I make a Magic the Gathering video on my YouTube channel? And it ended up getting 500 views. And I was like, okay, cool. Three months down the road, that video just absolutely explodes. And I'm like, all right, well, I'm just Magic the Gathering now. Sweet. Uh, so world champion allegedly allegedly can't be proven yes. uh and uh you've been doing magic for quite a while so this is you guessing hearthstone cards what i have done is because you've told me that you played hearthstone from goblins versus gnomes up to around rostacon's rumble with maybe a couple of breaks in between i have taken a card like an older hearthstone card just to get you back into things that i'm only going to show you cards post rostacon's rumble but uh a lot of these cards are super interesting and i'm really excited to see what you think of it especially coming from a magic player um, okay well my opinion is objectively correct so okay I think you'll learn something today. Let's go. All right. Well, let's start off with uh, one of the older cards. You probably have seen this card before, but again, I just want to get you back into the swing of things. Okay. Lotheb. Enemy spells cost five more. Yes, I do remember the good old Lotheb. I remember this being pretty good at the time where enemy spells cost five more. I'm trying to think of some intelligent commentary to have on the card, but <laughs> I can really only think five for five, five enemy spells cost five more and i can't elaborate of like oh well maybe they could play this maybe they could play that i can't think of that because i don't remember any of the cards but i remember this being a pretty good card at the time so uh, uh, here's a little tip because i've done this with other games as well is basically i try to picture how good that card would be in my game and then try to translate that over so would lothab be playable in magic uh let's see if i so it would be stopping the other player from having fun so it would be either a white or a blue card well, I'm guess I'm just gonna translate this over. That'd be like instants and sorceries would cost five more, and that'd be very dependent on what deck you're playing. Like if this guy's going up against an is it deck, that would absolutely destroy that. Uh, but if he's going up against a green deck, which is the best color of deck, uh, now it wouldn't really affect all that much. But it is also a solid body. A five mana five five is actually like it's not great, but you're actually getting something on the board. I'm going Why? to give the okay. I'm now going to give the Noah rating system. The Noah rating system is from one to fly five flamingos. I would give this card about four flamingos. It, flamingos are good, right? More flamingos, the better. Yes, yes. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Four out of five is probably a really good representation of this card. This card was really strong back in the day, as you probably have heard. Uh, in Hearthstone, this is much more used as an aggro sealer. So, like, you play this on turn five, and your opponent can't clear the board anymore, and they just kind of lose the game. Uh, this yeah. card is actually so good that in the wild format, which contains every Hearthstone card available, this card is still played. Oh, jeez. Uh, but this no. is just the easy one. I want you to know. I was just trying to make sure okay. you knew Hearthstone was. I'm going to show you a spell again. So this is cards you have not seen before and i'm really yep. curious to see how you find this and how many flamingos it gets okay puzzle box of yog 10 mana cast 10 random spells targets chosen randomly and it's a sh it's of the priest class it's, it's an epic it's mage sorry but i'll, I'll oh, give it, you the is that ma oh that yeah, is yeah. mage yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that also makes sense for the effect a lot more and it's shadow okay so what this reminds me a lot is it reminds me of yog which was <laughs> it at at one point, you know, it's like Yogg-Saron is like su a super meme -y card and just like kind of meant to be like silly and fun. But at the same time, it was actually pretty good if you got a good roll on it. Oh, yeah. I, I just, I've been saying Yogg-Saron and I've been mentioning him and I read out the name of this card, but go. I didn't even put it together that <laughs> it has the name Yogg-Saron in the card. Yeah, you said reminded me of Yogg-Saron. I'm like, he's getting it. He's <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I, I literally didn't put that together. Okay, <laughs> I don't know if this would be like the best card in the world, but I think that this is definitely playable. Now, I'm supposed to be rating these cards on how good they are, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, in terms of fun, this card is a 10 out of 10, but in the terms of the Noah scale for how good the card is, I'm gonna say it's 3.5 flamingos out of five. So that's actually a really good representation. 3.5 is probably where this card was, and you're right. So this card is completely dependent on variance, right? Sometimes you're gonna super low roll, sometimes you're gonna super high roll, but on average, 10 spells is often just gonna be enough to clear the board. And this card was played in competitive Hearthstone just because having an emergency button was often pretty great. Okay, so this one's pretty hectic. Uh, this is gonna be seven cards for one, just because this one card generates seven. 
good. Oh. And I'm really curious to hear your analysis on this because some of this is probably relatable to Magic. This is a card that was actually just released in this new expansion that came out probably about a month ago. So it, okay. starts, it starts off with this and then I will link you all of them. Uh, for six mana, we have Symphony of Sins. Discover and play a, mo a movement. Shovel the other... Sh <laughs> I'm going to start over. Shuffle the other six into your deck, okay? One thing I'd like to say right off the bat, I remember Warlock kind of ran out of cards somewhat often because of the hero ability. I, that did happen, I think, with them a little bit more, especially with hand lock decks. Uh, but this would help with that quite a bit. All right, so first up, Movement of Envy. Remove the top six cards from your opponent's deck. Okay, and that also would help into that strategy as well. Draw your highest cost minion. Reduce its cost by six. Okay. Deal six damage to all characters. Life steal. Deal six damage to the enemy hero. Give a random minion in your hand, deck, and battlefield plus six plus six. Movement of Greed. Draw six cards. Okay. Uh, and Movement of the Sloth. Summon a 6-6 six, six demon with Taunt and Reborn. I, I will say I like the flavor of each of the seven deadly sins. Although I, I feel like it's censored a bit with movement of desire instead yes. of lust. Yes, there was Reddit threads on that. See, at first I sort of looked at this and I thought it was more, it feels a lot of these cards feel somewhat controlly. The, yeah, so like I said, I really like the utility and all of these cards that you're getting from it are very strong cards as well. I think it might be a little slow because it may be in a large cost because it's going to be your entire investment for your turn. Shuffling them into your deck, these are pretty good cards to have in your deck, I would imagine, as a warlock. Uh, so I think I'm going to rate this one... Uh, I feel like you're just going to say, oh yeah, this card is absolutely horrible. But I feel like this one is a four flamingos out of five. Okay, so I'm going to burst your bubble there and say it is definitely not four out of five flamingos, unfortunately. It's probably, I want to say, I want to say two and a half but I'm leaning towards more of two. And let me explain why. This is your biggest hint from here on for, uh, forward. Hearthstone has gotten significantly faster. Uh, it is no okay. longer just sitting around waiting for your opponent to do something. Every single deck usually has a win condition. So if you're spending six mana to potentially get a card or potentially get, I guess, a movement that doesn't really affect the board, you could potentially just lose the game straight up right there, right? That's really slow. There is Control okay. Warlock, but even in Control Warlock at the moment, it just doesn't feel good enough. Will this get better? Potentially. Okay, I'm going to keep that. I'm going to keep that in mind in the future of it. The game goes a bit faster now. Okay, here you go. This is for Paladin. Oh, my Yog. One mana secret. When your opponent casts a spell, they instead cast a random one of the same cost. Oh, this this reminds me immediately of Mysterious Challenger and the secret oh, Paladin decks. Yep. One thing I have a problem with this immediately off the bat is you're paying one mana so you're losing a card because okay so in card games there's a secret hidden cost to every card you play when you play a card cards have hidden text that says you lose a card so by playing a card i'm losing a card in my hand so i play this card i put it out i'm losing a card in my hand and my opponent is also playing a card and losing the card in their hand so now we've both lost a card and now i'm gonna get who knows what out of this and my opponent is gonna get some random thing out of this uh and obviously that random thing could be good for me but on average you're going to expect it to be good for your opponent more so. The one redeeming thing about this, though, is I see that it is one mana. So you're just playing it like, hey, I'm going to throw this out here. Your opponent could potentially spend a lot of mana on something, and then it just has to, has to do nothing. So that sort of balance where you're losing a card, but in terms of a mana trade, you could be getting a lot more out of this, and that gives this card a lot more randomness than what it initially seems like. So my initial response to seeing this card is I don't think that it would be that a great amazing. I'm going to give it two flamingos out of five. Uh, so this card was actually very good. I changed my mind. <laughs> so the reason why this card was so good is this is basically counterspell um, with yeah. like a random twist on it. Right. And in Paladin, the deck that it was played in was more aggressive. So you would fight for the board and then you'd play Oh My Yogg. And if your opponent was like, oh, I have a board clear, but then they got Oh My Yogg, they're potentially just not going to get a board clear. There's a lot of spells, right? So y there is a huge opportunity for their spell and their whole turn just to be wasted on absolutely nothing because you played a one mana counter spell. Uh, I, think I, I respectfully disagree. Oh, interesting. I Listen, I don't know anything about Hearthstone, <laughs> but I don't like being wrong, so. Fair, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying how good the card is. There's, I think there's a fundamental difference here. You didn't mention the fun skill on this one. This card was atrocious to play against. Because oh, I, I would say this is one of those where <laughs> it's very fun to play, but horrible to play against. Yes, yes. And I think this was the one of the first times ever where I was like, this secret is absolutely miserable to play against. Speaking of secrets, I will show you another Paladin card. 
Two mana, Sword of the Fallen. After your hero attacks, cast a random secret from your deck. And then it's one attack and two durability. So what I'm seeing from this is I feel like I would not like this. As I feel like judging by what you've been s saying so far, and if you say I'm wrong, I'm going to be extremely upset. Uh, <laughs> this card seems like it would be pretty good because you're going to get two secrets from this. Once you're like three or four turns in, another nice thing is like you don't want to be like drawing a one mana secret sort of later into the game. You want to get sort of something on curve. And getting that out of your deck is also kind of nice, but it's not a it doesn't make a massive statistical difference, but I think here it would matter a little bit. In aggro decks, I could see this being pretty good. I would say I would rate this card 3.5 flamingos out of 5. And in terms of fun scale, I'm just going to go with the null value out of 10. Okay, okay, so I think that's pretty fair. The The fun scale, I think, is pretty irrelevant here, so I do agree with you. This card was actually pretty good. Uh, 3.5, I think, is a pretty good representation. Um, I don't know how great it is in Magic, but pulling a card from your deck and immediately putting it into play is pretty great in Hearthstone. So your ability to just pull these one drops, like you said, or these one mana cards that you don't necessarily want to draw later on the game is really great for tempo. And Oh My Yog was in the format with Sword of the Fallen. This card used to actually be a two mana one three and it was turbo broken. Like three durability was disgusting. So they made it two oh. durability and it was like 3.5, I think is a really safe bet to put it at. Oh, I would have given it like 4.5 if it had three durability. Okay, here is another one. So this one is for Priest. Zarella, I'm gonna assume I pronounced that right. Nailed it. Four so. mana, four, four, battle cry. If you've restored health this turn, deal that much damage to en all enemy minions. Okay. So I'll give you some context here. Uh, so you remember the priest hero power, which is two mana uh, restored yep. to health. That's the one thing. Priest often will get cards that heal your whole board or heal your opponent's face or your face. Though There is cards that did synergize with this card quite a bit. Yeah, uh, that's what I'm thinking right now. Because you can heal. Let's say I just do a circle of healing. Zero, I, assuming that's still in the game. And I just heal all, all my minions. Even if I heal like five health on all my minions, that's still going to just probably do quite a bit of damage to my opponent's board. It is one thing about it, though, is that it says that it's a four mana four four but you'd, you'd never actually play this on turn four and be happy about it. It's a higher cost card than it seems, but at the same time, I feel like the potential value you can get with this with all the healing that you can do would be not insane, but still pretty good. I am going to give this card three flamingos out of five. Okay, I think that's actually pretty great as well. Uh, there were cards that already did, like you said, circle of healing is not actually in the game. But they did print in the same set, I believe it's the same set, a card that was zero mana, restore five health to both heroes. So that was a huge swing turn at four mana. Uh, I will mention this, this card is a legendary. I don't know if um, you'd point that out or not. So you only had one of them in your deck. Yeah. Just, you remember Quest from Angoro? Did you play with Angoro? Uh, yeah, yeah. So you, you'd always start with it in your hand and then some, and then Rogue would complete their quest on turn one and you'd have to concede because everything they had was a 4-4 four, four. and then they had to like nerf it twice and it still wasn't enough. Anyways, what card are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, uh, uh, dude, don't bring up those bad memories. This is PTSD. Actually, <laughs> funny enough, you bring up the Rogue one though. This one was almost the same kind of toxicity. I'm not going to say if it was good or bad, but I will bring this up. This one was okay. very, very uh, polarizing, I'll say. Uh, so a quest line, wor it works like this. So it starts in your hand just like a normal quest, but there are multiple quests in the quest line. Okay, uh, I, I think so that's kind of like a saga in Magic the Gathering that I see. I'm going to trust you on that. I don't know what that is. All right, quest line. Take 10 damage on your turns. Reward, lifesteal. Deal three damage to the enemy hero. So after you, uh, after you complete that quest line, you get this. Okay, quest line. Take 10 damage on your turns. Reward, lifesteal. Deal three damage to the enemy hero. Okay, then when you complete that, you get this. Quest line, take 10 damage on your turn. Reward, Blight Boon Tasman. Tamsin, <laughs> whatever. Did you say Blight Boom? Blight Born. Uh, eh, close enough. It, there you go. Yep. All right, Blight Born Tadmin. <laughs> Battle cry, for the rest of the game, damage you take on your turn damages your opponent instead. Okay. So what I initially see from the first one is you're going to take 10 damage and it has to be on your turn. Yes. Typically in Warlock, if I am taking damage, I'm going to be getting something out of it. And I'm going to assume that Warlock has more cards to deal damage to themselves than when I played yes. initially. Yes. yes. So I'm yes. going to assume that this is at least a practical thing to do yes, to I will, some extent. I'll give you some hints and context here. During this set, there were cards that already supported this archetype. Uh, hero powering does affect this and fatigue yep. also affects this. What I see initially off this that kind of scares me is I have to take 
24 damage in order to do this. And this, what I see, it's not doing anything on the board. It's just me damaging myself. I'm trading that to get something else on the board. And like, there's a cost that's being paid there, which is going to kind of help me. This card, up until the point that you finish it, it is not affecting the board state at all. I feel like there's something I'm really missing here. <laughs> Because I just don't know how much how much you're getting for damaging yourself with a lot of the cards that you're going to play with this. But I, I feel like I'm completely missing the mark on this just by context clues you've given me. But this seems like a pretty bad card, I'm going to be honest. Because I'm taking 24 damage to get to the end of this. And Warlock, I'm going to assume I'm also going to mix in some healing abilities too. Yep. But I'm still dealing 24 damage to myself to yep. get this out. And that's the one thing I can't get over. <laughs> I'm going to have to give this card. And I'm... I'm willing to bet I might just be completely missing the mark on this. Probably two out of five flamingos. So I think two out of five flamingos is actually a really good representation of this card in this state. They nerfed this card basically four times uh, because it used to say, I believe it was six, six, seven for the, the how much damage you have to take. This card was meta defining. It was absolutely destroying the game state because it was ridiculous. The final effect was game winning in itself. If you got to play Tamsin and you survived, you won the game. All right, sorry, I don't know if you were considering this, but you you have to deal with your opponent's stuff while you're doing this. So yeah, yeah, like, that, that was my whole thing. I was like, <laughs> you're pretty much going down to six health, assuming you're not doing any other life steal. And yes. opponents really like it when you're at six health. Yes, exactly, exactly. So your analysis was really spot on for this version. Okay, uh, so let's move on to a little bit of an easier card. So this is neutral. Reminder, neutral can go in every single class. Okay, gear grubber. Four, man four mana for a four five taunt. If you end your turn with any unspent mana, reduce this card's cost by one. So immediately what <laughs> I think of is when I have unspent mana, what I immediately do is I use my hero power, which granted you can still have some mana unspent after that. But if I still have unspent mana after I use my hero power, that's not great. What, what also just immediately pops into my head is I'm willing to bet money this card was probably in the arena rotation. And I see this card being designed a lot more for arena. So even if this card was out when I was playing the game, I could still see it be okay. But at the current way that you describe the game, assuming that cards have gotten stronger with a bit of power creep, I'm going to assume that this card is, there's just not a lot to say and not a lot that it does. It's just going to be 1.5 flamingos out of five. I, I don't even think it deserves a flamingo. Uh, this card- Honestly, I, okay, I, yeah, I think I was a bit generous. I get, <laughs> Let's say one flam flamingo out of five. Yeah, so you're entirely right. If you're not spending your mana and this card's in your deck, your your deck's probably pretty bad. Even in Arena, I don't even think you picked this card. Yeah, well, the thing in Arena is you usually just run out of cards in Arena pretty easily, so. Yeah, and like if you top deck this card, it feels miserable, right? Yeah. Um, I understand what they were going for, and what I was trying to do was bait you with maybe the mana cheating to see if you could get behind that. Uh, and yeah, Hearth a lot of mana cheating cards I remember in Hearthstone were like really good because yes. if you keep a card in your hand long enough, like. I remember they had to nerf one card. It was seven mana. This card's cost was reduced by one every time something dies. And it was a five, five, and they had to nerf it to a two, yes. five. Yes. So the quarter creeper is the card you're speaking about. That card yes, was yeah, really that. good because you could still fight for the board and it would reduce its cost because the text on that card was says cost one less for each minion that died while this is in your hand. Okay. Uh, here is another card. Again, this is a legendary in its form mage. Six mana, five, five. Baladinda stone hurt. <laughs> okay. Battle cry. Draw two spells, swap their costs with this minion's stats. I'm gonna start by imagining this card in the two extremes. Let's say I draw two one ones. So now it's a six mana one one, and both those spells that were supposed to cost one mana now cost five mana. Let's say I draw two six mana cards now. What I'm doing is I'm paying six mana to make this a six six and reduce their costs by one, which is not nearly enough at six mana. At seven mana, it gets a bit better, but ideally I feel like it needs to be an eight, two eight cost cards, two nine cost cards, or two 10 cost cards to sort of start feeling like you're getting your value. You know, it's really sort of turning the engine. Like ideally, yeah, I'm playing this and let's say I get two 10 mana spells, maximum value. That's a six mana 10, 10, which as I put that on the board, it does nothing just sort of there, which is cool. So this is like an extremely bad card against like anything aggro I see initially. You're playing this with the idea that like, oh, I have a lot of high cost cards in 
my deck, and I remember there were some decks in Hearthstone that would just, like, forego any low-cost spells, and they just only put big ones in there for some effects like this, if I remembering that correctly. Yep, yep. But it's just that one turn that you're losing out on that I just, I can't get over. And that's always a, re I remember always in Hearthstone, if you're spending a turn and you haven't really affected anything, that is always a very big hindrance on you. I feel like this, this might be a little high, but I'm going to rate it. I'm sort of stuck between two and a half flamingos or three. Let's do two and three fifths of a flamingo <laughs> out of five. Okay, we're good. We're just mutilating that flamingo at this point. Um... Your analysis was really spot on, but I think the the part that you just don't know about Hearthstone spells is 10 mana spells or 8 mana spells or 9 mana spells in current Hearthstone are very, very powerful. So if you were able okay. to play this as a 6 mana, whatever stat you got, uh, draw 2 cards and then have that insane mana cheating from the spells that you're going to draw... This card was, I believe, the highest mulligan card in the deck. If you have to play this on turn six for six mana, you often just won the game. So this card was good, but I will give you the credit that this card is completely dependent on the spells that are in the format. And you didn't know what spells were in the format. So you're taking a very conservative guess there, which I think is very fair. All right. This is for Rogue. And combo, okay. just to remind you, is um, you have to play another card first. Let's see. Five mana, four, four, undead pirate. Never seen a card with two types. Very fascinating. <laughs> Combo. Put an enemy minion at the bottom of your opponent's deck. Okay, what's really nice about that is it doesn't say... I don't know how common death rattle is, but it doesn't say destroy. So it gets around divine shield. It gets around death rattle. It gets around a lot of effects when you put something on the bottom of your opponent's deck rather than just destroying it. So I'm going to do a quick analysis here and jump a little to conclusions. And this seems to me like it could be a pretty good card. Or also like if your opponent buffs that creature, you know, that's even better too. I, I could see this being potentially pretty good for Rogue. I'm going to give this one 3.5 flamingos out of five. So I thought the exact same thing when this card was revealed. I said to myself, how is this card not going to be played? It's pretty great. Uh, this card I has- I like you're about to say, and I was wrong. It, yeah, and I was wrong. I Dude, I'm very surprised because your entire analysis is how I felt about this, right? It bypasses death metals. It's really good if your opponent buffs something. It also maybe just swaps tempo a little bit, right? Put a minion back into their deck and you develop a 4-4 four, four behind it, but it just never really saw a play. It's just like a good card, but it's never just been good enough, which is really weird. And it tells you how fast Hearthstone has become, where putting yeah. a card at the bottom of your opponent's deck is just not very relevant. All right, uh, here's a spicy one for you. Immolate for four mana, Warlock spell, fire card. Light every card in the opponent's hand on fire. In three turns, any still in hand are destroyed. Okay. Three turns is a good amount of time. Let's say I'm playing this on turn four. Ideally, I play this like when my opponent has a lot of cards in hand. So like playing it later, the better. But still, usually people don't have a ton of cards in their hand on turn four is the thing. So you'd want to play this a bit later. And even if they do have some cards, three turns is plenty enough time to get rid of them. Because all the cards that I'm drawing, I don't necessarily have to play. I don't see this being very good for that reason of three turns is a lot of time to get rid of any cards you have in your hand. And just for that reason, I think I think this card is pretty doo-doo, honestly. I'm going to give it one Flamingo out of five. Okay, so very good analysis. Uh, yeah, it's it's pretty bad. Four mana do nothing, first and foremost, is absolutely miserable in Hearthstone. Uh, you don't ever want to do four mana do nothing for the most part. And you're right, against a lot of decks, like your opponent just plays their cards and this doesn't really do anything. Except when you're going against a very slow deck, this card is just wins you the game straight up if you turn this on, play this on turn four against a very slow deck. Okay, here is probably... The most interesting card out of all of them. Oh, by the way, just so you're right aware, we have two more cards after this one, okay? This is probably the most interesting one, though. Prince Ratanathathal. <laughs> Your deck size and starting health are 40. Okay. That's very interesting. Because yeah. cards I'm, in her sorry. stone, that's still 30 cards, right? Yeah, so I'll give you some more context. So it's still 30 health and 30 cards. When okay. you put, This card is basically, its effect is done in the deck building screen. So when you yep. add this card to your deck, it says out of 40, this does take up a slot and you will end up drawing this at some point. So I feel like this card is some kind of response uh, to all the aggro that you've been talking about. Kind of makes me think of a Reno Jackson where you're watering down your deck, but you're getting a buff with more health. I have to put 10 more cards in my deck, right? That's not as bad as having to have every card be unique in your deck. I, so like, I don't think the negative effect of it is that massive. 
I think, just by the way you've described her stone and the state of things, I think this card could actually be pretty good. I'm going to rate this card 3.5 flamingos out of 5. Okay, so I am showing you the pre-nerf version of this card. So this card was nerfed. Uh, this is what it looked like when it first came out, and I, in my... I played Hearthstone since closed beta, and I don't think I've ever seen a card impact the game as much as this card. Uh, I think they decided to end up nerfing this card. So the new version of this card says your deck size is 40, but your starting health is 35. So you only got five okay. more health now, which is a much, I guess, cleaner payoff because it doesn't feel as, I guess, meta defining as it used to be. Like it's still a good card. Like people still play it, but it's not ran in like almost every single deck now. Okay, so infuse is while this is in your hand, if a minion dies, it procs and infuse. So endlessly infuse two here means that two minions have to die while this card is in your hand to get the infuse. So we see 10 mana, 10, 10. I like that. Lifesteal battle cry, deal five damage amongst enemies. And that's randomly distributed, I'm assuming? Yes, yeah. That is what I see immediately is that is lifesteal, which is pretty cool. Let's say I play this on turn 10, which means I've had nine turns thus far. Let's say that I've been playing a minion a turn on each one of those turns and they've all died. So then it becomes a 10 mana 10, 10, deal 10 damage amongst enemies with lifesteal. If I am playing this with a slower deck, it is really nice to be able to gain all that health back and that's going to be really good against some aggro. And the endlessly infuse. Hmm. Oh, I this I thought this was a warlock deck. No, this is this is neutral. Okay, this is neutral. Yeah, yeah. I'm very stumped because I feel like I don't have a good context as to how many cards are going to die. I feel like this is actually I want to say a good card. Oh, and it does have Oh, I just realized the life steal is also going to apply to when it swings too. I I I kind of like this card, actually. I, I'm i bringing back the fun scale. I'm going to put this one at uh, 8 on the fun scale out of 10. All right, now put that fun scale away. Um, now over to the flamingo scale. I'm really kind of confused on this one because I don't have a massive amazing grasp on how many things are going to die. And if you're playing like a zoo deck, a lot of things are going to die, which I could see this card just absolutely bringing you back from the brink of death which is really strong i'm going to be very bold and probably regret it and i'm gonna rate this card four flamingos out of five okay so wow this is a spicy one um four flamingos out of five is not what i would give this card this is the nerfed version of this card and i want to make context here too that prince renathal the card you just saw is in the same standard format as sire denathrius as of right now the card i showed you this card does not see any play. I can't remember the last time I saw it being played after it was nerfed. You're right. In a lot of cases, this could actually just bring you from the brink of death and win you the game. But it used to say endlessly infuse one, which is. Oh, that would change my opinion wildly. Yeah. So that card was ran. I want to say almost as much as Prince Renathal, but at two infuse, it just feels like it's a little bit too slow. This is okay. the last card I'm going to show you. All right. Um. And this one is in three different steps. So I have to explain what Mana Thirst is. I'll show you the card first. Mana Thirst is if you have five Mana Crystals. So you need to basically get to turn five, unless you're Druid, to proc the Mana Thirst. Start off with uh, two Mana 2-2, two, two, Alistor the Bloodstorn. Okay, <laughs> Battle Cry, add Alistor the Protector in your hand. Mana Thirst five, deal two damage. We'll come back to him. Alistair the Protector, 5 mana, 5-5. Five, five. Battle Cry, add Alistair the Flamebringer to your hand. Mana Thirst, 8. Gain 5 armor. Okay, Alistair the Flamebringer. Battle Cry, deal 7 damage randomly split between all enemies. Mana Thirst, 10. Deal 14 instead. So, I'm just gonna rate this card and just look at it initially. Like, let's say it just doesn't have Mana Thirst, hypothetically. It, let's say this is just a 2 mana 2-2 two, two that adds another thing to my hand. This reminds me of, I think it was a mage card. It was Phoenix something. It would die... And then it would come back to your hand and mages would use it to get like some level of presence on the board. And what I see now looking at the mana thirst ability, this is feeling a, little, a bit more towards the control area where it's gaining you armor. It's dealing damage on the board to try and stall to get out this eight mana, eight, eight card. Just judging by other cards that you've shown me thus far, playing an eight mana, eight, eight that deals seven damage randomly split between all enemies. That doesn't feel crazy amazing. Uh, off of so you're gonna want to wait till you have mana thirst 10 like yeah you can play it before but it's like not ideal in total i'm going to spend about 15 mana trying to get this thing out and the only like massive effect i'm going to get is to deal 14 damage which 
I think is kind of not amazing. Yeah, a two mana two two and a five five. That's that's all right. You can put that on the board and be like, ha, I did something. <laughs> but huh. I feel like this isn't amazing. I'm going to give it two flamingos out of five. Okay. Uh you just gave me my thumbnail. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh this card's uh the most played card of the game currently. Uh it is basically Yeah, I put... changed my mind. Five mana, <laughs> five flamingos. So you're right. The stat line of this card is whatever. It really is. It's whatever. Dealing two damage, though, like you have to remember the mana thirst is at five, but you don't have to play it for five mana. It's still a two two that deals two damage, which is actually pretty yeah. good. It's pretty flexible, right? Really easy to fit into your curve. It fits into a variety of different decks. Aggro wants this. Mid range wants this. Control wants this. Um, but yeah, this card is, I wouldn't say meta defining. This card was nerfed. It used to be uh, like a little bit better. I think they just changed the mana thirst instead of like any of the, the stats or what it actually did. Uh, but it's really, really good. Um, probably a 4.5 flamingo set of five. Yeah, that's what I said initially. Yeah, yeah, that's actually, what so. you said. Yeah, yeah. Well, don't worry. In post, the magic of editing. We'll just make sure you said everything correct yeah. this entire video. Here, wait, here, wait. Let me give you a clip. Sure. I think that it is a <laughs> five flamingos <laughs> out of five and just splice all that together perfect no i go oh, we got it we got it we got it on our side i feel like this is amazing i think that it is a five flamingos out of five dude i appreciate you doing this i hope you had fun um hey yo no it was a great time i enjoyed it it awesome. allowed me to say, hey, I'm not going to study for my finals, which I very much appreciate. No worries. Uh, good luck in your finals, man. Uh, I remember being in school. I absolutely despised it.